Hello everyone, I'm going to uh, unbox and uh, review the secure tying uh, or se yes, secure tying super bright three times Cree XML T6 LED torch. They say it's 4000 lumens. I can't verify that, but you know, that's what they say it is. So let's open it up. It comes in a fairly nice retail box. Let's get that back a little bit there. there we go. Okay, get rid of the box, and we have a lanyard, which is nice, and the golden flashlight itself. Of course, it has no batteries, and there's a close-up view. It seems nicely machined. I don't feel any really sharp edges on it. Nothing that would cut me anyway. Uh, nice little slots for putting the uh, lanyard on or strapping it down to something. I like that uh, it's got lots of them and they, they, they're flush in a straight angle. In other words, this is square, which would make it easier to mount on something if you want to mount it. Uh, three XML Cree LEDs in there, or yeah, LEDs, as you can see. Bring it up. There they are. And the finish looks really nice. I'm quite impressed with that. The switch, just a little. Uh, button type switch, you know, and it says that it's water resistant. So let's take it apart Now resistant doesn't mean waterproof and the case actually says it's waterproof All right, so there's the uh, battery housing and it has one o-ring here uh, Nice like I said uh, a nice finish to it inside you see uh, where how the batteries go and that they're uh, nicely encased with the aluminum around them, so that's all right. It won't rattle as much. Um, and they all go in, it looks like they go in, in uh, parallel, not series, which is kind of neat. Uh, so the negatives are all up to the bottom. Uh, here's the back end of the light. Let's take that apart for a sec, real quick. Here we go. And it comes apart quite easily. And there's the circuitry. Well, looks fairly nice. Quality build there. Um, the back of the uh, reflector. Solid looking piece. And as we can see there is the power switch. Let's see if I can bring that in right there. Um, it says it's waterproof on the case. I think it's water resistant at, the, in, at this moment. Um, I think the biggest place of, of uh, leakage would probably be the uh, power switch as uh, there's no in insulation there and if I if I try and uh, cause some suction around that I, I, I can draw air through it which tells me that water would get into it so but I think the best way to uh, go about sealing that just put a dab of silicone right on that little uh, switch right there just put a dab of silicone on it and uh, see what happens I'm sure it would seal it and uh, this just goes right back on top of it so you wouldn't even see that so I try to take the, uh, the, the actual lens off and uh, no way I'm going to have to use tools to get that off like a, uh, I don't know, I have a uh, uh, oil filter wrench that I might be able to use to remove that but I don't really even see the need to do that. Uh, I think it's pretty well watertight that part. I'll test it though, I'm going to test it in the sink by uh, submerging it with the electronics uh, uh, outside of the uh, actual unit and probably only to about midway. I'm not going to submerge the switch. I'm going to put it to about there and see if the, if the lens is watertight. Um, the switch, even if you made it waterproof on the back end, uh, I would say it would still be water getting into it on through the front end. So uh, even then, that would make it uh, short. So I'll have to look at the switch, maybe take it apart and see what that looks like. Uh, but that's the housing. I put that back on and uh, it's pretty basic just put it on and twist it a bit there we go and give it a little twist there we go it'll jam um, like I said good looking little little uh, um, flashlight uh, what I like about it it takes four cells okay so let's put the cells into it these are uh, 
allegedly uh, 18 650s, uh, 450 um, milliamp hours. Who knows, right? This stuff is uh, highly um, suspect as far as uh, the specifications go. And as you can see, they all lie down, negative side down first, and then this screws in. And uh, again, you see there's an O-ring. Now, here's one thing I noticed, which is kind of strange. You see the lanyard? This is the cord to give you for it. I'm going to take that out and show you something. Really strange, but nice. See that rubber band that holds it together? That's not actually a rubber band. That is actually an extra O-ring. What a bonus that is. I mean, look at the size of that O-ring. You know, I don't know where you'd find another one like it. But it's, it looks like a silicone O-ring. And it does fit on the second groove. See, there's two grooves here. It does fit on the second groove perfectly. So um, whether they meant that or not, I don't know. But uh, I like the double O-ring uh, configuration. That's going to help make it even more water-resistant. Uh, I, like I said, I don't know if it can be made watertight, but uh, look, don't throw that rubber band that comes with the lanyard away. That's your extra O-ring. And it does fit a little more snug with that second O-ring in there. Okay, so, alright, so next is I'm going to go through the modes. Okay, and mode one is bright, two is less bright, three is even more, less bright. Um, and then we're going to go to off. I like that those three modes are selective, uh, selected just by pressing the, the button once. Now, if there has a strobe function and it also has an SOS function. And the way you get to that is by holding the button down. So I'll hold it down. There's a strobe. Hold it down again. SOS. And it is very bright. Okay, so um, let me show you that. It is actually very hard to look at. Um, so let me just shut it off. So one more, hold it down once again. And again. And there's the modes. So, one, full bright, medium bright, low, off. And then if you hold the button down, you get the strobe in the uh, remote, the uh, SOS mode. Uh, so, let me show you something too. Okay, this is your standard 550 paracord right here. It should fit really nicely through the little holes here on the side. Here we go. How nice is that? And you can wrap it around, all the way around if you wanted to. Uh, you can also uh, put it under each slot if you're going to put it down on something, you know, have it attached to something. So it's really, really nice for uh, securing this light to something solid. Now, okay, this is not a skinny little light. This is uh, quite wide for the lamp, the lamp size. So. Um, let me measure it out for you here. Okay, I'm going to measure the, the widest point, which is the head. And 59.07 millimeters, and let's go through the inches there. Uh, so 2.3, 2.255 inches, or 2 and 21 sixty-fourths. So, you know that's the widest point. Uh, let's take a look at the narrowest point, which would be the handle right here, and it actually flares a little bit towards the back. So you could, if you actually wanted to mount this on something to hold it, there is a flare on the rear end to keep whatever you put around it from sliding off the back end. Now it's not very big, but it doesn't have to be very big if you put something solid around it. Okay. So let's see that. So, back to millimeters, it's 50 millimeters, uh, 
1.9710 inches and 1 inch 31 30 seconds. Uh, and the very back end of it, which has a nice design on it, it's, a, it's actually a very good looking uh, flashlight. Uh, 51.75 or 2 inches and 370 or 2 and 5, 128. So uh, it's a little broader, but uh, again, nice. Now, brightness. Well, how do you measure brightness, you know? Very hard to do. Now, I have another flashlight. It's a Trustfire TR, uh, let me get that there, TR3T6. Uh, and if you look at the uh, reflectors and the LEDs, they look identical as far as size goes, even as far as layout goes. Okay, there are three. And one thing I did notice for sure is that this light is much brighter than this light. Now, is it a fair comparison? I'd have to say no. And the reason I'd say no is because this one holds four batteries, this one holds three batteries. Okay? But even when I put four in, in pair and series on this uh, battery, sorry, on this uh, flashlight by cheating it, um, I still did not get as bright a light as I do out of that. And I'll show you that. I'll do a test on that. With uh, I'm using a solar cell as a, a light meter. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you before I do the light test. Uh, the lanyard lanyard is pretty easy to put on there. It's pretty basic. Uh, slide it underneath any one of these two notches on e on any side of it that you want. Okay, and once you get it through, you just double it over on your string here. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so there's through, and then just feed the back end of it through it like this. That's it. You're done. I'm not going to tighten it down, um, but they're just showing, showing you that it's a very basic knot. Uh, they actually give you two little lockdowns to adjust the, the loop size if you wish. So that's another nice bonus. And uh, again, it's not coming off of there. I mean, you, you'd have to smash it to get it off of there or break the lanyard to get it off of there. So that's a very good securing point. And if you want, you could feed it through two of the loops and make it even uh, more more secure, okay? So let's do that. So you pull it through, push it through a second slot like that, and then through it again. So then you get, you know, twice as much whole uh, grip on that one uh, flashlight, just like this. Sorry, just like that. So that's what that would look like. And you can, like I said, keep wrapping it any way you want because you have a lot of securing points. Feels great in the hand too. Okay, so let's uh, test it for brightness. Okay, here's my light meter. What I've got is a, a, a battery charging solar cell. It's a fairly large size. A uh, meter to, to uh, test the output from that. And I'm going to flash the light on it and see what kind of voltage I get off of it. And then I'm going to compare that to the other uh, Okay, so here's my setup. I'm going to have the solar cell uh, outputting uh, voltage to my meter. And actually, I'm going to be testing it on milliamps. Okay, um, why it's probably a better judge on how bright the uh, light is and how much power it puts out, uh, how many amps it can drive that to. So, uh, right now it's ambient, it's doing 1.5 uh, milliamps. Um, let's take this up to the uh, 60 watt bulb I have here just to see how much that gives it and that brings it up to 47 50 yeah 49 milliamps okay which is you know quite acceptable here let's see if you can see that better I'll bring this over there we go yeah, I get 50 if I fool around with it but and going 48, 49. Okay, so that's the base. The 60 watt bulb will drive this solar panel at uh, 46 milliamps. Let's see what the, the uh, light will do in comparison. Okay, so there we are. And I have been using it. I should try this with uh, with brand new batteries. But let's see what we get anyway. And I'm getting 136. 31 milliamps. Let's see if I can get a better 
hit it in the center. Oh, look at that. I got 198 there for a second. Um, closer, closer, closer. That doesn't make much of a difference. I got 150. And let's see what the most I can get. Yeah, about right there. I got about 153. There. Oh, if I aim it right, there we go. 190. 195. Okay, so I get 195 uh, milliamps with the light trained on it correctly at high at high beam. Uh, mid beam 122 and low beam 45. So the low beam on this light is is it gives me the same amperage on that on that LE, on that uh, uh, photovoltaic cell as a 60 watt bulb. Okay, so I mean, seriously, uh, 190, uh, what's that? You know, three, four, four times, almost five times the brightness of a 60 watt bulb or energy of a 60 watt bulb coming out of this uh, little flashlight. That's quite impressive. Uh, next, I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna check it, test this with the three cell truss fire. Okay, here's the two uh, flashlights I'm gonna be comparing as far as uh, performance goes. And obviously there's a big difference in uh, size. Uh, but the uh, interesting thing here being that this, bat, this flashlight only holds three cells of the 18650s. And this one holds four. Which I would have to say makes it, uh, should make it more powerful and uh, you know, last longer. Uh, but we'll see you after I test the, uh, the brightness of the two. And uh, as far as size goes, well, you can see, you know, which one would fit easier into your pocket. Well, this one would definitely fit easier into your pocket if you have a pocket that fits that flashlight. You, you know, I doubt you have a pocket that fits this one. But um, the reason I'm comparing the two is because they're both uh, 3XML LED um, flashlights. So let's do a weight test between the two of them. And that one's 390 grams or 13.8 ounces or 0.86 pounds. Um, so 390 grams for, for the three cell. This is dry weight. There's no cells in this. This is an empty weight. 390. And this is 315, which makes, means that, you know, not only is it smaller, it's lighter. Okay. But the difference being. Here's the complete weight with all the batteries on this one. It's 504 grams or 17.8 uh, ounces. So let's see what it is with the smaller Securiting. Well, it's still lighter. 16.3 ounces. Oops, I just zeroed that. Let me unzero it. So, sixteen point three ounces with all the batteries in it, um, which is great. You get four batteries uh, into a flashlight that's uh, got similar uh, Cree LEDs in it, and it weighs what sixteen point three. And this one weighs, with three batteries, 17.6. So the Ultra Fire actually weighs more with less batteries than the uh, little secure, secure thing. So, uh, you know, as far as weight goes, hey, just one. As far as uh, amount of batteries it takes, it takes four, that takes three. Obviously, uh, that's more power on this, on this flashlight. Whether that means it's going to last longer or not, that's another question altogether. I'm going to do a test with uh, fully charged uh, batteries on this one till it dies uh, and compare that to this one with fully charged batteries till it dies. Okay, so here's the three cell truss fire. Um, and as we know, the 60 watt ball gives around 48 amps, milliamps, sorry. And uh, let's try it. And I'm using the same batteries I was using in the other uh, security uh, link or ink. So that's full bright. And I'm getting 166, 170, 
see what the most I can get out of it. Yeah, I'd say I think I got 170 out of it there once. There we go. 152, 155, 170. Okay, 171. That's the most I can get. So, obviously the other light is brighter because it, it get, puts out more energy onto that cell. Okay. Um, I'm going to try it with four cells, see if there's any difference, and uh, come back to it. Okay, I'm Jerry rigging a, a fourth cell to this lamp. Let's see what we can get. Okay, that's full power. It actually seems to have taken power away from it. I can't even get close to 170 anymore. Let's see. There we go. 168, 170, 168. So, regardless of the four cells or not, this is the truss fire with the four cells, and I still get less than I get with the other one. So, you know, I've got 171 on it. Okay, here's the uh, switch with the housing uh, removed. And as you can see, it's just a little switch, a little push button switch on a uh, circuit board. So, I guess you could put silicone around it or silicone in it uh, to seal that uh, opening if you wish to. Um, and make it a little bit more waterproof. I certainly am going to do that. And then I'm going to uh, put it, the, uh, the guts, which are right here, back into it. Uh, whether it's going to remain waterproof or not, it's another thing altogether. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I'm just going to put it together that way. Okay, there's the switch full of silicone. Uh, I'm going to put this uh, uh, little button back in. And if it doesn't work, you can always wipe it all out anyways. So... So let me put it back down there. There we go, just like that. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, actual button itself is recessed. Uh, so, you know, it won't... There we go. It won't... Uh, the little ring around the outside will actually protect it from being hit down and turned on uh, by mistake. Okay, I'm going to be using this light bulb, which is a 60 watt, uh, 120 volt, um, 780 lumen uh, light as a ref the reference point for my light meter that I've made. It's rudimentary, it's just something I put together. And my light meter is a, a solar battery charger. I have it set to charge a nine volt right now. And basically what I'm doing with it is uh, go to flash the flashlight on it, uh, see what kind of amperage I get out of it, and use that as a reference point for brightness. In other words, um, my light bulb is going to give me how many 780 uh, lumens give me on a uh, on that solar charger or solar cell and uh, I know for a fact at 12 o'clock uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon so in a high noon I get 330 amps sorry 330 milliamps out of this uh, charger which as far as I'm concerned is probably the maximum you can get out of it uh, so Basically, full full uh, power capability of this, of this solar charger is 330 milliamps, and uh, I'm going to test it with the 780 lumen uh, light to see what I get in amperage there. So we're going to do that test first. Okay, so here's my light, and put it right up to that. There we go, pretty well centered. And if you can see my meter, it says 63, 64, 
68, it depends. I got it up to 69 there. Okay, so 69 milliamps from a 780 milli, sorry, 780 lumen, uh, 600, sorry, 60 watt light bulb. Okay, so basically 69 uh, milliamps is the max. So that, that 60 watt bulb or 780 uh, lumen bulb is going to give it. Now I'm going to take the uh, secure tying. So you can get that. There it is. Secure tying uh, f uh, flashlight, three LED. And I'm going to put my um, Ultrafire TR1650s in there. Sorry for the focus. And I've recently taken one of these apart. It says 4,500 milliamp hours. Um, and I'm not sure if that's even true. Uh, it's supposed to be protected, but there's no protection circuitry in it. I, I took it apart and said there's no PCB in there telling it uh, to shut down if it gets too hot or whatever. So it's just basically a, a straight battery. Um, they're cheap Chinese batteries, but they work. So I'm going to put them in there and uh, then we'll see what happens. I am also have a second meter here to tell me the temperature. All right, so basically we can monitor how warm it gets through the process of doing this. Okay, so just putting it together. And then I'm going to get my best uh, possible beam on that. I'm going to put my temperature sensor on it. Probably right around there. Looks like a good place for it. Right on the head. And let's see what we get for amperage on this. Okay, full power. You gotta get. Looks like I'm over. Yeah. Going over. Let's go to. There we go. And I saw there for a second. There we go. So I'm able to go over the 200 milliamps. Um, probably just over because I'm getting 198, one whatever there. So trying to get that as high as possible. Here we go. Alright. I'm now getting 194. Remember, 69 um, was my 60 watt bulb. So let's see if I can get any better. Yeah, I can get slightly better there. So 195 is what I'm getting right now. Uh, the temperature is at 90, 89 degrees, 90. Yeah, I got good contact on that. Let me make sure. Yeah. 92. And I'm going to put my timer on that. And uh, then basically see how long it takes for the uh, unit to shut down. Okay, and iPhone is uh, going to be measuring the time. I'll put that here for now. It will time out and uh, shut down anyways, but uh, when I'm done, I'll, uh, when the light powers down to nothing, then I'll uh, stop the timer. As you see, the temperature is rising. Okay, we're into eight minutes at this point. So let me show you that. And the temperature is 128 uh, Fahrenheit on the head. Uh, we still 176 uh, milliamps of energy. Uh, the body's warm, uh, you know, but not too hot that you can't put your hand on it. Uh, but it is getting very warm. Uh, the head's going to be hotter, of course. To see that. 
And I think if you kept your hand on that for a long time, it might hurt you. But uh, now we're up to 129 there. So, again, I don't know if it's the actual flashlight getting warmer or the uh, uh, batteries. I suspect it's a bit of both. Uh, but, again, you could handle that in your hand. Though it is getting rather hot. Uh, now we're getting, what, 175, 178, and we're into 9 minutes at this point. I'll let it keep going, and I'll keep updating it. Okay, 10 minutes, 31 seconds, 32 seconds, and the temperature now is 133. Uh, and the head is getting hot enough that you can't really put your hand on it for very long. It actually will burn you. Um, but the handle uh, appears to be cooler. So I'm thinking the heat's coming off the head itself. Uh, again, I don't know if that's the batteries because they have no protection or the actual flashlight itself. But it is getting hotter. This is full power at this point. Uh, we're at 11 minutes and it's uh, climbing up to 133. The uh, amperage is 176.9. Okay, we're up to 14 minutes, 14 seconds. Temperature now is 140 and that's hot, you know. Um, Put your hand on it for any amount of time it will burn you it will hurt i can put it on for about that long after that i gotta take it off because it gets too warm the handle still i'd say it's manageable but it's getting hot too again i don't know if that's the batteries because they have no protection or the actual flashlight itself but at this point i would have a hard time holding it yeah it's hot everywhere and we're still putting out 174, 175, there we go, 174, 173 amps of uh, light energy on that solar cell. 141 now. All right, we're at 20 minutes, 23, 24 seconds. Temperature is 150 now. Uh, that's really hot. It's hard to keep my hand on it even that long. Uh, temp the uh, amperage is 167. I just moved it. 169 and uh, well yeah it's still giving off light but you can't there's no way you're going to be able to hold that in your hand uh, again I don't know if that's the batteries or the actual lamp itself when I get a good set of batteries I'll tell you okay we're in almost well 26 minutes uh, temperature now is 154 Fahrenheit uh, we've still got 161 160 160 uh, milliamps being generated by the power cell so I mean 154 that's uh, too hot to actually hold even the base of the hand, the uh, flashlight it's gotten too hot now again I know I've said it before my batteries may be the issue because they are not protected okay we're into half an hour uh, 29 minutes 30 seconds half an hour and the temperature starting to go down I'm um, down to 150 uh, 151, 150, it's cycling between the, that and 150, uh, but my output is starting to go down quite a bit too. We're down to 78 now, 77, 76, it's dropping quick. So um, I'll keep uh, continuing to flash this, uh, you know, do this test until the light actually goes off, uh, but at this point it looks like the ba battery uh, is starting to discharge quickly. Uh, 59 now, 58. You can see it dropping quickly there. All right, we're at 34 and a half minutes, close to 35. And at this point, the flashlight's uh, temperature is 134, 35. It's, uh, you know, hopping between the two. And my energy output is 12.9 uh, milliamps, 12.8 milliamps. So it seems to have peaked around 30 minutes or so, or just before 30 minutes. And uh, in temperature, that is. in um, then it just says seriously uh, down a down uh, slope loss in energy. So uh, like I said, I'm going to keep this going until uh, it, the light no longer shines. Uh, right now we're at 35 minutes 10 seconds and 12.1 uh, milliamps of energy on that uh, photocell. Okay, we're at one hour fifteen. Sorry, one hour and five minutes, uh, twenty seconds. Uh, temperature's down to ninety-seven, and uh, the output is down to two point seven. Um, 
it's uh, quite dim actually at this point uh, just bas basically you know shining some light but it's still on and I'm gonna leave it on right up until the point where it shuts right off all right two hours 46 minutes uh, 0.9 milliamps so it's getting pretty down on, on the light but it is still projecting light uh, temperature 79 80 uh, degrees which is uh, about three degrees above ambient at this point all right we're at three hours 36 minutes um, 78 degrees which is just above the temperature in this house at this point uh, and we still have light shining on the cell but it's a very small amount at this point it's 0.7 milliamps I uh, see that's in the way here 0.7 milliamps on the meter so it's still uh, running so I'm gonna keep running it right until there's no more light coming out of it all right it's been eight hours 28 minutes uh, there's still output from that lamp believe it or not uh, I'm getting 0.3 milliamps on the actual uh, uh, meter probably can't read that um, but that's what I'm getting 0.3 and temperature is room temperature but hey I'm going to continue it on until it no longer gives any more light. Okay, that's uh, 19 hours, 10 minutes. Uh, temperature 75 degrees, which is the ambient temperature in the room. The output is 0.2 milliamps. And yes, there's still light coming out of it. Um, it's usable, I guess. If you needed light, it's better than no light. But it's, you know, barely, barely bright enough to really you know well it's still usable um, I can continue to run this test but at this point I think we're just testing batteries and uh, so yeah even 20 almost 19 what, 19 hours later and uh, it's still working and uh, there it is off um, yeah, so battery life on this is okay. Um, performance is good. And this is using the uh, unprotected and uh, more or less uh, bogus 18, TR18650s from uh, Trustfire that say they're 4,500 milliamps, uh, milliamp hours, but they're not. Uh, I got a video on, on the, those as well. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's it right there. Um, I guess battery performance is pretty good on this uh, bat on this lamp because it's still got something coming out of it. There we go. It's still not bad, you know. It's not blinding, but it's still a light okay so that's my my performance test on this uh, flashlight I think it's more of a performance test on the batteries itself but uh, that's it all right it's a very dark night but uh, I'm here to test this light out so uh, hopefully the neighbors won't be too bothered here we go full power and as you can see it lights up everything so see if I can get step it back a bit here there you go try not to scare the neighbors too much And for range, where do I, what can I do for range? Here we go. It lights up everything. So that's enough of that. Okay, we have a dark Texas night. Um, got a fairly dark road here and I have my uh, high beams on on my Hyundai Sonata so I'm just going to shut those off uh, then I'm going to give you a reference using the 502 the uh, sorry 
using the Ultrafly uh, WF502B. So there we are, we're off. Alright. This view. This is quite a smoggy night. Let's go over here. There we go, we'll get a better view of what's going on. And here's the end of the road down there, there's a the little light hole, but as you can see, this is fairly bright light, but it's just a little single cell 502B. Now I'm going to use the security uh, three cell that I've been testing here and on full power. Here we go. As you can see, that's mega bright. The bugs certainly like it. And they're attacking me. <laughs> um, give you a view. So, brand new batteries. Fairly impressive. Let's do a. Here's the vegetation. And follow it up right to the end of the road. As you can see, it's actually more powerful than my headlights. Let's turn the headlights on. High beams. There's my high beams. Okay. So, high beams. It's pretty wild how strong that light is. So, that's the security. Three cell light, dark night. There's the uh, mid power, low power, and off. All right, I wanted to use something fairly significant. Uh, this is a water tower near my house, and I'm flashing the 502 uh, WF 502B on it. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job of lighting that up. Okay, but now we're going to go to the secure tying flashlight. And that just basically makes it like daylight out here. And it, it beams up the whole tower, as you can see. It just, and this is a significant tower, it's, you know, easily 100 feet high. And uh, as you can see, no problem illuminating it. There's uh, mid beam and there's low beam. And it, there's off. Okay, and just to compare, I'm going to use my three cell uh, Cree Alt Ultra. And it does a pretty good job, but it's not as bright. And it's slightly different color, but it's a bit more of a spot, less of a beam. As you can see, that's the Ultra uh, 3 cell or 3 Cree LED. And now for the final, this is the 12 cell. High power LED. Now this is the trust fire. 12 times T6. All right. So here we go. I don't want that. There we go. And it just, again, it's hard to even uh, tell you how bright that is. Let's see. There we go. The whole half of this tower. I'm sure the airplane up there can see this light. No problem at all. And. Uh, it is a definite flood. Uh, that's the 12 uh, Cree LED flashlight. There's a medium, medium and the low. Let's go for something else. Excuse the noise, but 
I'm parked on the side of the road. Okay, I'm gonna spot beam this on a field. Okay, here's, here's the secure tying again. And as you can see, really it's, it's hard to give you how bright that is, but it is super bright. That secure tying light just lights up the whole field. I don't think the camera does it justice. Okay, so that's, there we go, there's a little bit of, oh, you see the deer there? Got the eyes, saw the deer, there it is. Seemed to be chasing it off. That's the secure tying, three cell, and I spotted the deer there. And the bugs are coming after me. Okay, so that was all three modes through that. Actually, let's do that again. High. And I can still see the deer, medium and low. Okay, and now I'm going to use the three cell ultra fire. And it's more of a spot, but I can still see the deer under the tree. I'm not sure whether you can see it, but he's right around there. And uh, yeah, there's the eyes. Hopefully I'm getting that on the camera. And there's medium and there's low. Like I said, the camera doesn't quite pick it all up. All right. This is the Ultrafire WF502B. It's a good spot and I can barely see the deer, but it does do a good job of lighting up the area. My eye's doing a better job. And now for the 12 Cree light. It's huge. And I can see the deer there, no problem. And it's super bright. There we go. That's the 12 Cree. Really? You know what? I really have a hard time seeing the difference between the uh, three LED uh, Cree secure tying and this one. Let's do it again. Let's compare them side by side. Oh. Well, I got a car. All right, I'm beaming these down the road. Hopefully, you'll see them. This is the 502B. Uh, you'll see that the 45 mile an hour sign there is lit right up, and uh, it does a really good job, actually. I'll go higher and spot it down so you can see. All right, that's the 502B. Okay, secure tying. Cree. 3XML, full power. I'm going to change the angle a little bit. Here we go. Sorry. Secure tying. Cree 3XML. Boom. Back. Ah. I'm telling you, you, I don't think the, the video camera is going to do justice. That that sign from here is very hard to read. In fact, it's just blindingly bright. So I'm going to go up higher, give you a spot, flash the tree here. As you can see, the tree is very defined well. Let's, let's do a little turn over towards the tree. There we go. So that's the... Uh, Secure tying three LED Cree. Super nice. I'm really impressed with that light's power. Ultra Fire uh, TR3 T6. A tighter uh, focus, a tighter beam, uh, less of a flood. Still super bright. Not as bright as the uh, Security tying go. There we go. That that speed limit sign just glows. And here's my overkill 12 Cree LED light. Oh, I got a car coming. I'm gonna use the 12 Cree LED, and uh, we'll start with the tree and work our way down. 
It's just super broad flood. But you know what? I still think that 3 Cree LED um, is doing a very good job comparably. It's not that much more blindingly bright. I think what I need is better batteries in this uh, flashlight or more charged up. Anyways, that's this one. This monster. So, comparison, I'd say that the Securitine Cree 3 LED is a very, very bright light and it compares very favorably with everything else I've So, let's do a quick comparison. There's the 12. There's the I actually think the uh, secure tying is brighter. There's the 12 Cree LED. I think that just needs better batteries. And there's the secure tying. It actually is brighter. Wow, that's impressive. And that's my flashlight test.